around the country. Seven ten now on News Talk ninety six five KPL. Welcome into Winging It Wednesday, Miss Carol Ross on the hot seat. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. So good to see you. You know what the best part about about Carol is? She has her own key to get in the door. So we didn't uh even have to get up today. That's right. She's official. (laughs) Yeah, but not for the outside door. (laughs) Thank God. Bernie was walking by. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is true. I forgot I was walking by. These don't work on that outside door. Well, you're Mm semi-official. Let's see how today goes. Maybe we'll (laughs) get you another And she always brings her own headphones, so that's pretty cool, too. And usually Oreos, too. Usually she's Yeah, they're they're back in the office. (laughs) Only the thins. I don't like the regular ones. Too much of that one. White stuff. <laughs> You're not a fan, I, I like guess, the of that, the stuff. mega stuff. Not, oh <laughs> Three my. times. Those are awful. Ah, it's too much. <laughs> Those are me. just appalling. <laughs> too much to me. So um, we are now, I was just like flipped over to see if we had any any uh, Trump tweetage this morning about the compromise. We don't. So far, the only tweet from the president this morning, the Senate Intelligence Committee, there is no evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. All right, so that came That's out yesterday. That's bound to drive the Democrats <laughs> crazy. Well, so it was <laughs> I mean, so they're going to go right off the edge. If you, you think have, 2016 was bad, yes. this is going to be horrible. You had the majority <laughs> leader and then the <laughs> highest-ranking minority, okay? They're at complete odds over the report from the same committee. How is it even <laughs> possible? Doesn't everyone have to sign um, off on this, at least behind closed doors? Politics. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You <laughs> know, <laughs> nobody's going to want to give a bit of ground on this. They're too dug in on both sides. Um, but, I mean, it's become increasingly clear, especially as the information has come out. And I, I will give this to Trump. I think he's played his cards right on this. He sort of let this whole thing stew for a long, long time, and a lot of the information has been leaking out, leaking out. It should have come out sooner. I, I think a lot of people were frustrated that he didn't release some of the classified information mm-hmm. that they've had for quite a while, that they've known. They've just let it trickle out, and they've let it sink in that this whole thing really was a witch hunt from the beginning because of the fact that Bruce Orr, when he testified, way back when, uh, he told them that this was unverified. I mean, he was their guy, and he told them, we know it's unverified, and his wife worked for the firm who, who put together because this phony thing. Because it was thing. opposition research. The, That's you know. all it was. It was okay. paid by the opposition. But to use those FISA warrants, and I wonder when those judges are going to come out and real lay it on the, really lay it on the line, because they were flat-out lied to. Um, yesterday, Rush brought up the point, which I hadn't quite thought of, which is why would they, the Democrats, okay, on if this if this is opposition research, why would they have ever made public the stuff that they could use in 2020? Would they have kept some of that stuff under wraps because now we're up against another election that they would use it then? Well, as long as Hillary's not involved, they don't need it. I mean, it was her dossier. Mm-hmm. She funded it. Her mm-hmm. campaign funded it. The Democratic National Committee, which is now under different management, Debbie Wasserman Schultz was in charge back then. Uh, they gamed the whole thing for Hillary. You know the superdelegates they had all lined up. You know, So Bernie Sanders, you know, he, he really doesn't have anything to gripe about. He is a socialist. He's not a Democrat. Why would he think that the Democrats would do anything to help him? Yeah, well, that's a good point. Where do you think we stand on this negotiation? What are we two days away from a quarter of the government apparently going unfunded? It seemed like the president— we we know what Wall Street did yesterday after what he said. I kind of didn't think it was one way or another because he left the it wasn't option but open, but Wall Street loves it. Wall Street loved it because Trump was equivocating again. He wasn't really saying, but I think he left the door open. And I think, i tell you the truth, he in a way he's in a box, but in a way he's not. His, his base is going to like the fact that there's no DACA or TPS, you know, uh, involved in this. Mm-hmm. They're going to like the fact I do like the fact that he still ha- retains the ability to move funds around. They still let it, let him retain that ability, even though he's getting less money up front for specifically border barrier. And mm-hmm. whether it's slats or whatever it is, and I think that's pretty much what everybody agrees should be done, some really strong steel fencing of some type. And um, – one point three eight billion is not that's not a lot. I mean and what is that what is it? Forty four miles and what he wants to do is fifty five or something? I mean we're close. Yeah. Well I think he's gonna get the fifty five miles yeah. because they, they I think they still have a lo- enough left that they've already funded. 
and they're still working on uh, securing some of the fencing they had before was pretty atrocious. Well, and that's it was a, nothing. That's a lot of what you know, the president has said in these rallies. Look, we're already doing it. We're yes. already doing everything. They're already a lot of it has been repairs to the stuff that to the to the existing, existing stuff, yeah. which which was no border barrier at all. Really, if you look at some of that stuff, that that was nothing. I okay, mean, what the eight month old a pregnant woman just hopped over one of one of those barriers. <laughs> yeah, gosh, you know, I mean, it really Sauntered wasn't much of through. a barrier. But the uh, but the fact is on this, uh, I think he's, I think his look after that last shutdown, his his numbers are up to fifty two percent because he did satisfy I think the the need of his base at this point in time. I don't think there's a percentage in it for him to still remain hardcore and shut it down again. I think that's where you're going to see fatigue on both sides. Well, because you now you see we've gone from not one dollar. To what one point right. seven two? And I billion? wonder how Nancy Pelosi is going to handle this because I mean she was like, what if not, I what if one. I what if I open the the government, Nancy? What would you do? I'm not giving you any money. I mean it was like yeah. yeah. Okay, the That's one thing I I hate. Well, okay, not one thing of the things I hate about politics. <laughs> <laughs> the one of that the I many think, things that you hate about <laughs> politics. The one thing I think is the most glaring is when old ideas <laughs> are recycled. And they are credited to the most recent person to suggest mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about Ted Cruz making this hard stance that El Chapo should pay for the section of the wall. Um, our very own Bill Cassidy has talked about this for years. This is nothing new. The, Bill Cassidy actually brought it up in the last, I don't know about years, but, but th- you know, this uh, first came up in 2017. Uh-huh. Uh, this was first proposed in 2017, and I believe it was Cruz's uh, um Proposal. Mm-hmm. I think it was his bill. It it kind of went dormant. Now with El Chapo being convicted, it's back up again. The they're estimating that uh, he has about fourteen billion in <laughs> assets. <laughs> but you know where it is? Where in Mexico? Yeah, right. it's in there. Mexico. Yeah. How are you going to get that? That's a good question Jeez, because the think. Mexican government is not in favor of any kind of barrier. Why? Because half uh, a good chunk of their uh, uh, economy comes from repatriated money coming from the United States. Why the hell would they want a border why would they in want any to do it? in any way shape or form? But and why are they not the one cuz I just have to laugh. You know, kudos to the prosecutors who were able to get everything <laughs> they needed to convict El Chapo. Yeah. But why the you know what is it us? Why are we the ones doing it? Why isn't Mexico taking care of their own drug war? Because Mexico is fundamentally a failed country and it's it's just not apparent yet. And with mm. this new guy, and he's not even giving lip service to to keeping a lid on the drug cartels. Yeah. And then we find out the last guy may have profited they, yeah, very there handsomely. That they, that he was well, charged. it came out at the trial that uh, very likely the government, the government in Mexico, look, the drug cartels are so powerful, they're so wealthy, and they are ruthless. And their their phrase is, "You take the silver or you eat the lead." And so, who in their right mind in Mexico? That the people down there don't feel like they have the power that we have going through the courts, et cetera, yeah. because they feel the courts are corrupt as well. Mm, yeah. Uh, are Not you to mention, well, I mean, we're getting, to, <laughs> I think we're getting to that point <laughs> when you look at what's going on right now in this country. Are either one of you uh, concerned about the Canadian border now? My only thought about this is it's sort of like we're putting all of our focus where, yes, we know the majority of it does come from, okay? But then you have a similar situation where it, it may not be people from Central America, but are there terrorists? Are there Ooh. are there other things coming through Canada? Well, because do we have more confidence in the Canadian government? We probably do. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. They are not a failed con- con- country. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they still have functioning good distinction. Uh, yeah. Judicial processes, the law enforcement processes. Um, I I think I have more confidence that Canada will be able to find out these things. Uh, I'm, I'm really worried about Mexico. I will be honest with you because we have that right on our southern border, and they're not, they, they give lip service to some things, but they don't really do anything to help us control mm. the illegal immigration. That's well, not interesting. Because it's not in their best interest. Just to do so. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. Carol Ross is in the hot seat. I do want to take a second, though, hmm. to clarify. I think some people thought last week when Stafford was on. That we blew out winging it Wednesday and it was going to be <laughs> Stafford every week for an hour. No, it's not what we're doing. We're trying a little bit of a hot seat format where we can really dive into these issues hard mm-hmm. and not worry so much about making sure everyone has equal time, but really just getting into the issues. And some conversation. And we'll, of course, take your phone calls at 232 mm-hmm. 1542 as well. So, all right. Go. I want to talk about Sherry's Berries. So tomorrow, it is. Tomorrow's yeah. D Day. Tomorrow's Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah, right? I mean, okay, so how does it work? Sherry's berries, delicious giant strawberries dipped in chocolate. They have milk chocolate, dark chocolate, 
white chocolate. They've mm. got chocolate chips. Stop yourself. Have you breakfast yet? Sprinkles. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop talking about it. They're good. We're both melting down here. <laughs> right? So you should go to berries.com and order some. It's B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com and order your berries. $19.99 plus shipping and handling. But because you know me, there's also a code that I have mm-hmm. that leads to more. Should have known. A great discount. So, up in the right-hand corner at berries.com, there's a microphone. When you click on the microphone, then you can enter the code BERNIE19. And for $19.99 more, you're going to get a dozen red roses. So, your sweetheart gets delicious chocolate-covered strawberries and beautiful roses. And you are not (laughs) sleeping in the doghouse. Do it, guys. (laughs) Do it. Berries.com, B E R R I E S. They are fabulous. Right? They really are. They're I've, delicious. I've, I've had some sent to me. Mm. Yes. They Click are. the microphone in the upper right hand corner and type Bernie in Bernie 19. 19. That's my code. Coming up on Winging It Wednesday, National Lampoon's $100,000 trip to Israel. We'll talk about that next. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Winging It Wednesday with Carol Ross here on the hot seat. We were just talking about President Trump and how he loves to he loves to brand people. Mm-hmm. You know, just whether it's with a nickname or whether it's, you know, for a while it was Lion Ted. And Focahontas. Then there was, there was Focahontas. Focahontas. And there, I mean, you know, I think. Little Marco. It, yeah, Little Marco. Yeah, it's uh, all of those. Uh, what, what was Jeb? Was Jeb? Um, Low Energy. <laughs> low energy low jib, energy. something like that. <laughs> you know, it's all over the place. So I want to talk about uh, the trip to Israel that our governor took. Now, I will probably get a lot of angry phone calls, and I'm happy to take them at 232-1542. Okay. But in a week where we have had a member of Congress being called on to step down because of her comments on Israel and anti-Semitic remarks, at least we have a Democrat who's acknowledging Israel's importance to well, us okay. in the world or as an ally. So. Is it worth it, Carol? Well, I thoughts? don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Did he? What you know? Was it? Was it just a little sentimental journey for him and the state police and a few others, or or was it a real economic development uh, trip? We're having a hard enough time getting American companies to invest in Louisiana because of our negative policies. Do you think the Israelis are going to be that stupid? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, it, what really worries me is that we have a great productive workforce. We have kids getting a great education in our universities and then having to go somewhere else to get a job. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? Well, then grandma and grandpa, because when they go far away and they get married and have kids, grandma and grandpa are going to leave and follow the kids. Follow the kids, yeah. You know, so I this is not a good thing. Are we, uh, and Moon has said this before. Are we going to lose another congressman because of losing population? We don't know. We'll find out with the census. With the census, yeah. But, uh, but it really is a, a troubling thing. I mean, if... He, I don't. I'm not fond of this governor, as many <laughs> know. <laughs> no way. I'm not fond of John Bell. You know. I mean, I think his policies are so negative. I think he has unleashed the dogs of legislate of of lawsuits on the whole economy, and uh, you see it in the advertising. If they weren't feeling confident about uh, being successful filing lawsuits in this state, they wouldn't be advertising to beat the band. Am I happy for the radio and TV and <laughs> stations? <laughs> yes, I'm very happy that they're spreading those dollars around. But I want to tell you, this is a it's a troubling uh, aspect of our economy in Louisiana that uh, that lawsuits um, have have deterred a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, you've heard about the the companies that have just they they've come in and they've looked at our lawsuit environment. And they've turned. We're a judicial hellhole. You can look at all the, de- the yeah, people can decry that, but mm-hmm. it's there. It's it's not something you can overcome easily. Well, so I guess the million dollar question then becomes: Okay, so ju- let's just say these companies all decide we're not coming there anymore. Um, we know that the job market is still what it is in our area. Yet we hear from Greg Gotro this morning the good news about sales tax yes. revenues. Yes. So but that we is d- probably remember. the clearest sign of of diversification, I would say. Right. Well, we have d- listen. <laughs> as you know, I was. Very involved yeah. in a project called Vision Lafayette back in the 80s when we were we were on our butts. Yeah, I mean, seriously. We have done a lot of diversification. We have uh, 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 really done great things with our cultural economy. We've done great things with education. Health care 
is an amazing sector in, in Lafayette. And remember that we are drawing on a huge trade area, mm -hmm. a very large statistical trade area. So we're fortunate in that. Uh, and so far, with a lot of the smaller outlying municipalities, they keep raising their sales taxes. So far, we've managed to keep somewhat of a level uh, playing field in Lafayette, in the city of Lafayette. We, we haven't gone as far as some of those areas where they brought in the big box stores, but in order to do it, they had to give put a tip in, mm -hmm. which means they're collecting an extra penny or two. Uh, I've had people from Karen Crow email me and say, oh, we're, we're paying 10.45 in that one tip district that but of course, the, the then super one and everything, right? right there's always a trade-off. Yeah. There's always a trade with a tip. You're you're taking a chance, but at least you're going to get some money back. Mm -hmm. Pilots, on the other hand, you don't want to do a pilot. That's giving away the money up front before you even know what you're going to get. And so, a lot of times when they put in a tip to get a business here, same thing with the ITEP, the Industrial Tax Exemption mm -hmm. Program. Mm -hmm. You, it's a chance you're taking. You have to look at what's your return on investment. For instance, you wouldn't give away the money up front to that town center development. I wouldn't. And even our tax assessor got up, and even some area mayors got up and s spoke against it because it's a giveaway up front. But with a TIF, you at least have the prospect of getting something back on the back end when you sell something and, you know, that yeah. extra penny is coming in. My biggest fear always with those, especially with the money on the front end, is it makes it so much easier to just decide, eh, this isn't working for us. Well, you know, what did, what did we get that for that? We're supposed to, what, what were we promised? A road all the way through to Vero School Road. Do, do you remember those promises? Mm, yeah. Was that, and that, was that going to go like on the back side? We, yeah. Really? Wow. All the way through behind Lourdes and all the way to Vero School Road. We can't even get half of that road open yet. Yeah. I hear various reasons why. Uh, it stops right there behind Costco at that corner. That's You're right. You're totally right. That's wow. right. So it doesn't go all the way through. And part of the fact is that uh, the rest of the development hasn't been done as promised as it was anticipated, I think, because of lawsuits on that piece of property. Yeah. So, you know, it, but on the in industrial tax exemption program, I would say watch out for people who are trying to do away with that completely. As long as we have the terrible tax structure that we have in Louisiana, for some parishes and municipalities, that is the only way to attract major businesses. And if you look at what just happened with Exxon, now they're not going to do their expansion over in East Baton Rouge or in the Baton Rouge area. Now they're going to Beaumont, uh, something like that, because they were denied that industrial tax exemption. And that's another thing the governor did without much debate, without much and back that and forth. was it together Baton Rouge, right? Or was it together? That's together Louis Baton Rouge was fighting it. but And that's a, look, that's a, that's a very liberal left-wing group. They're not fond of corporations in any way, shape, or form. But these people provide jobs, and this is, this is what people need. Um, I will tell you, there, there, are, there are tax exemptions and there are tax exemptions. Uh, I'll give you an example, stellar setting. But first, let me finish with the governor. Uh, putting that in where any entity, any local entity could short circuit any of these mm -hmm. is really kind of unfair to every local entity, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you can stop that, and these are jobs that come in. Now, people will say, well, why should they get the tax exemption and small mom and pop don't? You look at a place like Stuller that requested a 16000 a year for 10 years, right? Stuller has been here for 30 years, however many, employing thousands. I mean, oh, at least 1,200. Huge employer. Yeah, area. huge yeah. employer. Yep. They make very good money. They spend money with the mom and pops, with the small businesses. They buy homes. They buy clothing. They buy, you know, all sorts of things. And so that ripple effect can be felt. You do want to have, a, you want to have a little bit of flexibility, so that a place like Stellar, which you know has been doing the job, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't get doesn't get short circuited when they ask for just a slight break. I'm telling you, the property taxes in Lafayette Parish, they're. The big employers and the big property owners are paying hefty well, amounts. Well, I mean, just look at the amount of property that Stellar sits on, too, you know? You're talking some of the major employers, the property uh, own and the, the property management companies like NPW, one of my sponsors, BO Companies, Stellar, Frank's Casing Crew. You talk about some of the big companies here. They are paying huge amounts. Yeah. And if you look at the actual breakdown of who's paying what, well— Businesses are paying about 66%, about two-thirds of all the property taxes being paid in Lafayette Parish, maybe more, being paid by businesses, commercial entities. It is pretty funny that um, right in front of Stuller, like on their doorstep, is that terrible road project. 
<laughs> you know, like the road to Stellar is still unpaved. There is, you know. Well, I, well, mean, I think it's, it's pretty. That intersection has just o- has opened. Oh, okay, okay, that's open. Uh, there are still sections that aren't. It's like the road that took forever to build. Well, we kept we kept hearing because we would ask questions. Okay, people, that was uh, such a pain point. Now it's kind of moved over to E. Broussard, Kali Saloon, which which that is something. At least you're starting to see something when you're sitting in traffic at five o'clock. At least you can watch the construction happening. Um, but we would get calls about Vero School because you wouldn't see anything happening, and the answer we would get was, "You guys have no idea the amount of drainage that is just south in that neighborhood. It's the drainage works being done." And we're still seeing some things sit there. So Well, I think it takes way too long to build any projects in Louisiana. Just a lot of people involved. And then they have to keep yeah. being repaired. So you have to question who's in charge, who's looking out for the taxpayers' money, who's holding their feet to the fire, the contractors, et cetera, the engineers. Um, I'd like to see more of an ombudsman position in our uh, in our Department of Transportation. And I would not like to see all the money that goes to uh, yeah, I'm sorry. They're they're overweighted on salaries and et cetera. You look at the amount of money that's going to anything but the roads, and you wonder why people don't want to give them any more money because we don't see the money that's going there now going to what we want. Yeah. All right, quick break here. Seven thirty four now at News Talk ninety six five KPL. Hilarious. That's <laughs> what you are. Sorry to cut you off. That's there. okay. That was hilarious. Don't take offense. I love that you love me. Don't take offense. All right, so we're getting uh, some of your calls and some of your emails in as well. The number is 232-1542. I want to go back to the border debate because it's it's crazy. I sit back and I think, what's the difference, okay? The, with Now that we have social media and we have 24-hour coverage of this, it's almost like to stay near the surface of the water, you have to be making these statements all day long and staying top of mind. I even think about it with with AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. In the situation where, you know what, I'll tell her, one of the things corporate, you know, corporate campaign finance, if she she actually has some decent points in that. Like just but stick to that where honestly you have people on both sides saying we kind of understand what you're saying about just corporate spending, it's etc. But then you do something like the green new deal, which it looks like they're going to push to a vote just so that these Democrats have to give it an up or <laughs> right. down. Mitch McConnell, is, yeah. he's, he's pulling a good parliamentary move there. I mean, yeah, just oh, yeah. You know, put, okay. it, put your money where your mouth is. Because so many of them are running for president. So it's yeah. a great move. Yes, so many. Now we're going to see, and they're giving it lip service, but now let's see when the when the rubber meets the road mm-hmm. and you have to That's actually right. cast a vote on this. And it's not which like way you gonna go? you can change your vote. Uh, yeah. Can't do that. Right. <laughs> Can't do right. that. <laughs> so what do you make of it? I mean, Obviously, this has to stay top of mind. I'm just reading back. I w- went through the, the Trump Twitter digest 10 hours ago. I want to thank all Republicans for the work you've done dealing with the radical left on border security. Not an easy task, but the wall is being built and will be a great achievement and contributor toward life and safety within our country. Yeah, I think pretty much right now his base is thinking uh, there's not much else to be done. Let's let's go with this. Let's see where he can find other pockets of money. After all, I mean, he does have he does have the. Um, uh, that the uh, national act that was passed back in 19 uh, national emergencies act or something like that it was passed back in 1976 i believe and it gave him it gave the president pretty much leeway and it also stipulated that congress didn't have to didn't have anything to say about it it was part of the president of course we we've seen how that has gone with trump it has not mattered that what the law says about the executive um, uh, power that he has the to exercise. Yeah. doesn't matter what he's exercised. The courts are always going to go after him, which brings up a really good point because if we have people who elect representatives who vote the way their constituents want them to vote, who express the will of the people, if we are a government of, by, and for the people, and yet every time something like that happens, the court steps in and says, uh, we have a better idea. We don't think you should do that, and it's up to us. Why even have a legislative or an executive branch if the court is going to come in every damn time and tell you what you have to do what and what you can't the do. Greatest deliberative body. That's what they do. They debate. They look at things. They look at the pros and cons. Then it seems like the court comes in and just says, "Well, based on law, well, you you make a based good on point. based on what based on what law? Yeah. I mean, your interpretation of the law. You're not supposed to be making law. You're supposed to be interpreting it. And sometimes, you know, depending on political bias, do not tell me political bias doesn't enter enter into it. What about this? It does this thought? Okay. And uh, this is a little bit of a stretch, but we're talking about, you know, 
the Democrats being forced to kind of put their money where their mouth is on this Green New Deal. I heard a scenario yesterday where the president issues a national emergency for this month, okay? Then the House, led by Nancy Pelosi, puts up a motion, approves a motion that says we want the Senate to vote on it. Basically, we are against it, so then it would force the Senate to vote on it. Republicans in the Senate are going to be in the same situation where they're not going to want to vote on it either, don't you think? Well, they've already passed the National Emergencies Act in, can- in Congress. They're not on, doing on anything. The specific, on the specific national emergency of the border wall, on border wall funding. But it's already passed. Why would they have to do it again? So, you, so your contention is it, stay, it, it already falls under the National Emergencies Act. It's what powers. the le- Supreme Court likes to call stare decisis. It's already settled law. Okay. It's already been exercised multiple times, including by Barack Obama, George Bush, Bill Clinton, all the way back to Jimmy Carter. It's already been exercised. There are still some national emergencies still in effect right now. Uh-huh. About 58 of them, I think. So those the last three, because we keep... <laughs> it's, it's yeah, a there's lot. a, there's a bunch of national emergencies I feel still. Like they keep talking about just the three. Iraq, war, 9-11, and FDR during the Depression where he closed all the banks. There are more than yeah. those three that, 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 that aren't even that? that aren't even real emergencies, in my opinion, but they somebody considered gotcha. them an emergency, and they got away with it, but now gotcha. it's Trump. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. the whole difference. It's Trump, and so we're not going to let him have anything because, after all, he's an illegitimate president, and the Russians got him in there. So there. <laughs> 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 and we're not going to go along the- with anything he says, and we don't care, it seems like we'll, whether it's we'll legal or not. Hopefully see the end <laughs> to that maybe sometime soon. There are thoughts that maybe in the next couple of weeks we could hear the final findings from the Mueller investigation. Yeah, but you hear what the Democrats are setting up right now. What? I mean, they're setting up a whole bunch of additional things that – Perhaps Mr. Mueller didn't look at. And so there are other things that we have to look at. Not only that, the Southern District of New York, they hate Trump. (laughs) They hate Trump, worst of all. And they're going to keep that roiled up forever. So I watched or I listened to yesterday this new podcast that premiered. It's from ABC, and it's Kira Phillips, who is the wife of John Roberts, uh, the Fox reporter. And it's called The Investigation. And basically, she has sought out just to talk to people and get their their thoughts Mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. No no fact check, you know, just just what are your thoughts from your point of view? And her first interview was with Gary Cohn. It was an hour. You know, he was the original kind of Trump legal mind mm-hmm. behind all this. Mm-hmm. And his contention is that he doesn't think there's even going to be a report. He thinks there's not even going to be a report because there's nothing. He says he knows everything that Mueller has and that there's nothing to even write a report on. Well, he better write a report. He spent uh, how many millions <laughs> yeah. of dollars? I mean, he needs and to. And how many months? Yeah. And that would be even worse if there's no report because then there's no end to this. Then it's just the speculation ambiguous. continues to roll right through 2020, which would be, I wouldn't put that past Mueller and Weissman. You know the history of Andrew Weissman. You go back to Ted Stevens. What they did to Ted Stevens, what they did to Scooter Libby, they've done it over Enron, the Arthur Anderson people. It's, it's a pattern with both of them. And they're not alone. Comey, Mueller, and, and this guy, um, you know, Weissman. They are unbelievably political. They're, I won't even say what they are, but they are, they're like the dogs of war. So it would be worse to you to get no report. Than yeah, report because then the speculation continues to, to roil on. It, it feeds the Democrat narrative because then it gives them the power or the, the impetus to continue with their investigation because, after all, Mr. Mueller didn't issue his. So it's incumbent upon us. Oh, gosh. You're just I mean, it's terrible. A whole lot of mess. Well, it is a whole lot of mess. Two three two one five four two. Good morning. You're on Winging It Wednesday with Carol Ross and Robin Bernie. Go ahead. Hi, how's everybody doing this morning? We are, we are nice. It's going to be a good day today. <laughs> I, I have to say though, I, I miss the debates on the uh, Wing, Winging It Wednesday when uh, Carol and uh, and Stafford get into it. <laughs> Love it. You guys are great. Look, I would start uh, a Kickstarter for you guys to to uh, have a show with with just you guys on it. Uh, I'll, I'll, a Kickstarter. <laughs> okay. okay. Wait, can, do I get the money? <laughs> hey, we call that advertising. <laughs> yeah, 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 was, we do a Kickstarter I'm, every I'm day. Just, just, <laughs> I, I really do look forward to Wednesdays. But look, listen, um, I just want to say that um, um, being a, a guy in the middle and seeing all this back and forth going on between um, Democrats and Republicans, especially between liberals and conservatives, conservatives it's getting old it definitely is and i'm not the only one and uh, you know i have a lot of independent friends and no party friends and everyone's getting tired of it it's 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 almost embarrassing a little bit you bet but that's all i have to say good good guy, uh, job you guys thank you appreciate i appreciate that and he's absolutely right i think people are ready for a prag- pragmatic approach 
to be honest with you, if it weren't for, you know, some of the things that were said in the campaign and all that kind of stuff, what Trump is doing is actually pretty pragmatic. He's not an ideologue by any means, by any means. But he knows that there are certain things that he has to do, and that is one of them is, and he ran on this, and he got elected because yeah. immigration was the wedge issue. People are tired of what's going on with the uh, unfettered illegal immigration. We have to get a handle on it. If we don't, we don't have a country. You know, the interesting part is the one of the biggest criticisms um, that I've heard of Amy Klobuchar, who you know who announced her candidacy, was that uh, there are a lot of the Democratic strategists. I mean, I think even some just poll watchers and election watchers that say she's not extreme enough for what that party Isn't wants that right sad. now. Isn't that sad? That is sad. Really, and and I've seen other analysts say she could really take that middle ground because that's the ground that, as the gentleman said, people Tired. want to get things done, good things for the American people, and they're just tired of the, just the back and forth bickering. It's a, as a, what was the guy called it? Revenge politics. That was uh, Howard yeah. Howard Schultz. Yep. He's he's right. I mean, yep. they're tired of the revenge politics. Can we finally get something done? And that's why I think really at this point in time, I think with the fatigue going on in Washington, I think Trump is going to go along with this deal. Do you um, ever see a time where we see a, a split ticket, a Democrat president, Republican vice mm-hmm. president, or just because, think about it, if you have someone like Klobuchar who's willing to say, you know who I'm going to work with? I'm going to work with, I don't know, some Republican. You know what I think is interesting? If you hear some of those younger ones that got elected, like even from California, that got elected in – and in under questionable circumstances because of that ballot harvesting that mm-hmm. they were doing, you know, which was really something else. But they are from districts that went for Trump, and they're willing to compromise. They're, I, I think they are willing to compromise. I think we need to add the, the song The Middle to the Winging It Wednesday music rundown. Yeah. Carol Ross. I mean, the, 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 you know, when you see the one, the, you know, Nancy Pelosi and the women in white, that, that's such a small group. I think most people just want to get things done for their constituents. I believe most representatives, most congressmen are that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you who's been a real surprise, and I think he's he's going to be there for as long as he wants to be, Congressman Higgins. I think he has surprised a lot of people with his willingness to work across the aisle. He will not trash anybody. He does not speak ill of anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has his strong beliefs, but he's willing to work with uh, people uh, across the aisle. I I think a lot of people have been very uh, impressed uh, with him. I want to say kudos as we wrap up with Carol Ross um, for your work on Home for the Holidays. This week was the big check presentation. Wasn't that awesome? It warms my heart as much as all that great food at Joey's. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that warms something else. (laughs) Yes. And so so, you you go there and you see all the work that these, you know, what I was actually. You hear the stories. I told the story about um, Healing House yesterday. David, the little boy. David, who. His entire family was killed in a car accident. He survived, and Healing House really came through. And, you know, they, they're very humble. They won't say they're the reason. I'm going to say it right here, though. That sort of stability when yes. you, you know, focus, you know, you deal with something that, that, that's that tragic so instantly, you need some stability from somewhere. And if it's not happening in your family, yeah. it's happening at some And they need like a peer group, and they get that peer group yes. with the other people who have suffered terrible, terrible loss, they and they realize – they yes. get him. They understand. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so He's much beautiful. for your work that you do. We are uh, Oh, well, Town Square was great. Always KATC, by the way, on the show this afternoon, we are going to be talking to Jim Hummel. Oh, cool. About his investigative work with, I have a call into the bishop. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> but I haven't heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but Jim is going to come on because I think it is, a, it is a great story that needs to be told. Yes. How did they verify the names? Yes. You know, because the, I haven't heard anybody I say know. it wasn't true. And so... I, I really want to give KATC, our news partners, tro- uh, props for, yeah. for the work that, that they did. That's one of those things, and, and I'll say it from experience. It takes a long time. It does, yeah. A lot of times if you have management over you who's saying, we want a new story every day, new story every day. Yes. So this took months and months. Mm-hmm. Yes. Jim and I have been talking about it. The other thing that I think is interesting is yesterday the Alexandria Diocese, because, you know, one thing they didn't announce was the parishes they were from, the parishes where they worked. They just announced the names, and yeah. their reason was because they don't want to hurt the flock of parishioners who follow these people. Uh, they've already, they've already, been, hurt. Yeah, they've already been hurt. They've already been hurt, guys. The church, uh, my church, I'm so disappointed in my church for the way they've handled this. This is not only illegal, and it's very fundamental. It is immoral. It's unethical. Yeah. What they did to cover this up, we saw it with Gilbert Goethe. I yeah. also, I've also tried to get in touch with Ray Mouton to talk to him about his book, which was 
w- one of the first yeah. instances when it went public with Father Gilbert Gothe. Yep. And remember what the church did with him. They just moved him from parish to parish. This is, this is fundamentally, mm. uh, this is so tragic. Yeah. So and Jim Hummel this afternoon right. on the Ross Report with yeah, Carol Ross. Three o'clock. Mm-hmm. Three o'clock. Uh, hopefully I'm going to have Debbie Ryan on it, too. We were, you know, we've had a little scheduling. And Debbie is doing the Women's Chamber of Commerce. Awesome. The Lafayette Women's Chamber of Commerce, which I think is awesome because there's so many women-owned yep. small businesses who don't have real representation. But she says guys can join, too, so they're not being discriminatory. <laughs> I love it. But this is a gr- I think this is a great stor- start toward a small business chamber of commerce, and I like it. All right. Carol Ross, thanks for coming in. Thanks. Wing it Wednesday have each and every day, week everybody. right here on News Talk 96.5 KPL.